Uh, hello um, and good afternoon everyone or good evening. Um, uh, welcome to Regent's webinar on how to create a fashion portfolio. Uh, so uh, I'm calling from London, from Regent's University in London. Uh, so thank you for coming along today and I hope you enjoy the presentation. I hope you find it very useful. Um, obviously, if you've got any questions and things, please feel free to use the chat um, as we go through the presentation. Uh, my colleague Abdul will respond to those questions through the chat. If there's anything he can't respond to, then I shall certainly, uh, hopefully, um, be able to answer some of your questions, maybe in relation to portfolio work and things as well. Uh, so this is us, uh, Regents University. We are in central London. We're in one of the Royal Parks in Regents Park. So we're in a beautiful green oasis uh, in the heart of uh, London, one of obviously the major fashion capitals of the world. Um, and that's me. I'm Stephen Dell. I'm the course leader for the BA Fashion Design course at Regents University. I've been at Regents for over a couple of years now, uh, running the fashion design course. Um, just a little bit of background, I suppose, in terms of uh, my experience, certainly in relation to developing fashion portfolios. So firstly, I'm an external examiner at Central St. Martins for their postgrad diploma fashion course, and also external examiner at University of Brighton uh, for their fashion with business studies course. I've delivered a number of uh, portfolio workshops and programs over the last few years. Um, LCF, London College of Fashion, Vosso and SIA in China. Um, before that, I was also a course director at Kingston uh, School of Art and director of programs at London College of Fashion and also a course leader at, um, at University of Creative Arts. So I've obviously kind of um, worked at a number of different uh, leading fashion institutions uh, and hopefully the experience there hopefully um, will be invaluable in terms of the portfolio advice we're going to go through today. So first of all, just want to talk about the aims of the portfolio. If we start to think about the purpose of, the, of your portfolio and what you're really trying to do with a design portfolio, um, it's, it's, a, it's a key part of the overall, overall package that represents you, your skills, your individuality and ideas, which you'll present at an interview. And that may be an interview with a university. It may be an interview for an internship opportunity. And it certainly will be in terms of future employment within the fashion industry, you'll be taking a portfolio to show potential employers as well. And really what you're trying to do is promote you. What's distinct about you, your skills, certainly your individuality. It's really important that you find your voice through the way you express yourself through your portfolio work and, and clearly communicating the ideas you have in your portfolio. To be able to communicate your creativity, your individuality, and your aesthetics effectively, you'd need to show your work in an uncomplicated, concise, and interesting manner. So really think about how you cur curate your, your portfolio pages. Think about what you select to put in your portfolio and how you tell a story in terms of the development of your ideas within your portfolio pages. Here you can see, a mixture of different elements from design sketching to 3D work to collage work to a development of ideas. And that's kind of really what you want to be kind of showing in terms of portfolio work. And it's very easy to read. It's kind of interesting because there's lots of things going on, but also it's not over complicated. So portfolio ingredients, what to put in your portfolio? Well, if you're applying to fashion courses, um, then it will consist of several different types of design projects uh, and certainly can include things like photographs of garments, 3D experimentation, textile samples maybe you've done, some sketchbook work you can put into portfolio pages, digital imagery, photography, collage work, drawings and illustration. So quite a range of different elements uh, will go into your portfolio. If you're applying to degree courses within fashion or general design courses, they often like to see three different, a minimum of three different design type projects, okay? Showing uh, your design response to the research that you've used. So here you can see a snapshot of three different projects by one student, where you can see um, elements of the research, 
um, their process, so I'll talk about design process, where they're designing and maybe developing ideas in three dimension, as well as their final design outcomes. And their final design outcomes can be illustration work, could be made garments, could be main products, so it could be different things. These are snapshots of a portfolio. So within each of these projects, I would say there's probably about eight to 10 pages in a portfolio for each project. So you look at about sort of 30 pages within a portfolio. Your final portfolio will include an edited body of work with examples of your research, uh, development of ideas, and finished pieces or design outcomes. So here, on this page, this particular student is looking at the idea of packaging boxes, cartons uh, that are used for packaging that have been deconstructed, um, uh, drawn from, worked out, and then eventually kind of upscale to explore on the body to develop kind of three dimensional ideas on the body. So you can see kind of the research and the development of ideas and also the finished outcomes coming through in this particular slide. And that's really what you want to try and capture within your portfolio pages. Um, when you're going for interviews for university, uh, the academic tutor will be the one that looks at your portfolio work and they will want to see your design process. Uh, not just any final design outcomes in your portfolio, but they want to see the inner workings, the, the ideas behind the final design outcomes. So do make sure you include process pages in your portfolio. This aims to show your creative thinking, uh, how, you, how you develop ideas, as well as your level of design experience and capabilities. It enables the interview to really understand how you think creatively and how you express your ideas through that process. Uh, your sketchbook pages uh, can also demonstrate how you research, generate and develop ideas. So you may even be asked to present one or two sketchbooks at interview as well. Uh, but I would always include some process pages in your portfolio as well. So I'm just gonna go through some of the key sort of elements to really think about in terms of what people look for in your portfolio, what they will want to see um, to, uh, within your various projects, okay? So the first thing is drawing and visualization. That is drawings from observation of the world around you. And that could be research images that you've used as inspiration for a project. It may be visits to an exhibition. It could be objects you're looking at. Uh, whether you've been draping or deconstructing garments on the body or on a stand, as well as drawing from fashion images, all those different elements. You want to kind of think about how you can communicate those elements in your portfolio. So make sure that you're including a variety of drawing mediums and techniques, okay? Such as experimental drawings, design development drawings, maybe storyboards, collage work, all the way through to fashion illustration and potentially even technical design drawings where you're showing your design more of a technical drawing than an illustration. Here, this particular slide, you can see a student working in their sketchbook or in their portfolio where they are doing some drape experimentation on the stand and then drawing from that drape work, really mastering how to capture that drapery, that knotting technique. And then they'll eventually look at how they apply that within their design ideas as well. So that's kind of one part of the observational drawings. Um, here you've got a student working in a sketchbook where they are looking at a particular artist. The artist is called Hans Baumer. And they're doing little study drawings from the research. And what that student's trying to do is to kind of show what they like about the imagery and potentially how they might use it in terms of design. So that's the purpose of your drawing in your, in your portfolio. It's going to communicate what you're looking at and ultimately how you might use it as a design process. Here you can see um, a student who has sort of kind of deconstructed and draped a denim jacket in quite an unconventional way on the mannequin and then use that to develop ideas, really pushing uh, the 3D work through into their design drawings here. So I'm going to show you a little bit, a short snapshot of a project as well, just to show you the different elements of drawing uh, and illustration work. So here's some research imagery. So this is kind of like a mood board or a concept board. 
This is the inspiration behind the design project, okay? So the student's looking at Coca-Cola uh, and also 1960s fashion. And it's almost a hybrid of the two elements coming together to inform the design process. Then we have process pages where the student is design drawing, uh, variations of an idea, as well as maybe using collage to explore ideas on the body as well. Also including some research images and also fabric swatches. So really communicating everything that's going on in terms of the development of that collection. So this is a process page. And then all the way through to then the final illustrations, the final lineup, illustrated lineup of the collection, where you're including color, detailing, thinking about the silhouette of your designs, whether it's got print, what sort of fabrics and so on. So you can see the kind of range of different kind of drawing uh, techniques and mediums used within uh, the drawing and visualization section. Research. Research is a really important part of being a creative individual. We use research to inspire us, to shape our ideas, to shape our creativity, to shape who we are as a creative person. And research is a really important part of that. And maybe you've got specific interests, maybe there's certain artists or different people you like to look at in terms of inspiration. It's important to kind of utilize that. So evidence of how your own research interests inform your design ideas is really important. Certainly an interest in contemporary fashion is important, but your work should be informed by wider art, design and culture. Okay, so you might be looking at sculptors, artists, uh, different cultures as sources of inspiration and form your fashion work in your portfolio. So I'm going to show you a few different examples in terms of portfolio work. So evidence of research to be presented as part of the project and demonstrate how it has informed the design process. Uh, and this is including primary and secondary research, rough ideas and notes, descriptions and annotation if necessary. Okay. So primary and secondary research. Prim uh, secondary research is images of someone else's work. So maybe a photographer has taken pictures of the, the anatomy, the body, um, you can see on this page. But also your primary research might be your own photographs of the body. And that's primary, it's your own research findings, the things you find interesting about the body. Then the student is kind of exploring this research through their own experimentation. And that experimentation is through drawing and also through developing things on the body or on the stand in terms of looking at 3D shapes on the body. And it's that combination of things to try and document, maybe write little notes of details and ideas alongside these sketches. That's great to see in your portfolio as well. And you can see how students really pushing their ideas. And this is a really important part of design processes where you don't come up with just one idea, but you try to push your creativity to see how many ideas you can develop from a piece of research in your portfolio or in your sketchbook. And that leads me nicely on, nicely on to creative process and problem solving. So you should think about how a project um, shows all stages of the development process. So show a clear re record of testing, exploration and experimentation. This is the fun part of any design project is where you're testing things, you're trying things out, you're experimenting, you're being really kind of broad with your imagination to explore lots of different ideas. So, so the, this part of the, the process is really free and open and should really encourage you to think quite creatively in a way. So try not to just come up with one or two ideas, really try to think about how you can show that breadth of ideas in your portfolio. And this can be evident through your drawing and stand work. So if you're, you've got garments maybe you could drape with, or maybe you've made things that you can draw from. Um, there's lots of different things you can do. You can style yourself and photograph yourself and draw from it as part of a process that you work from. So here you can see stand work on a mannequin and also on a person, as well as drawings from it and, and looking at sort of variations of ideas. Here you've got further drape work and you can see the students trying to work out also how things are cut potentially or how they might be made. So this is about showing the development of technical skills 
um, as well, where you're thinking about how things might be joined together. So you can use the garments you're draping with to examine how they're constructed as well. Um, and ultimately, you're showing a range of 3D experimentation alongside your drawings. So think about how you photograph and catch this and place these into portfolio pages. So alongside the drawings and 3D work, there are also elements of research images added to these pages as well. And that's important to show what you're working from in terms of inspiration. Look at how these pages are curated. Okay, you've got a mixture of 2D and 3D things as well as inspiration. And also you've got here um, using unconventional materials as well. So here you've got someone sculpting using um, lengths of wood um, and constructing shape ideas. So it doesn't even have to be garments. You can be really creative and imaginative about thinking about how you adorn the body. Uh, so use your imagination. Look how the student is kind of photographing and documenting that process. And these are the sorts of things that are really good to include in portfolio. And it's showing your, your approach to working in 3D. You're also encouraging yourself to think about the body and how things look on the body. Look at the idea of proportion and also silhouette on the body. And all the way through to final sort of kind of design outcomes. So this could be a part of a garment. It could be um, a, 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 an accessory piece. It could be a multitude of things. But certainly there's lots of imagination. There's lots of creativity in here. And this is what those um, academic tutors will be certainly looking for, is that kind of imagination, that, tech, um, that kind of creativity in your portfolio. Storytelling, and this is a really important part of your portfolio. So when you're putting your portfolios together, in your when you're sorry, when you're putting your projects together um, into your portfolio, make sure you organise these in a logical order. And this is really important because this is part of telling a story. Is you're going to tell a story from the beginning all the way through to the end. So we call this concept to realisation. Okay, so you start with your research imagery, your concept, maybe mood boards as the first page or two pages of your, uh, of your project. Then you follow through to the development of ideas, which will include the 2D and 3D experimentation, as you can see here. Maybe that's two or three pages in your portfolio of, of development of ideas. And then leading on to finally, the final pieces or design outcomes, which could be illustration, or it could be photographs of made. So it could be a combination of things. It's quite nice to have each project slightly varied as well. So think about how you're telling a story from start to finish, okay? the way you curate those pages. Now these are the most important things because I've shown you lots of different examples of work and there's some really outstanding work in this presentation, some really good confidence skills, but that's not everyone. And I think it's really important to kind of make that clear in a way. What is about your portfolio? It's about you and you showing your creativity and most importantly, your potential. Okay. You're not a pop, you're not a you're not an accomplished designer yet. That's why you're going to university. Okay. So it's more about the potential you have, okay? And that kind of determination and commitment to your own development. So what it's about, it's about your personal interest and how you individually apply this to your creativity rather than showing highly polished portfolio work. So think about how you're just being creative. That's the most important thing in your portfolio. Maybe you're not so confident with the drawing, it doesn't matter. Play with the drawing, experiment, make it work at its best, be creative in other ways as well in your portfolio. I've shown you lots of different examples. And finally, you know, be creative and dynamic with the way you visually communicate you and your work. Create the right mood, atmosphere, and aspiration for the viewer. Really have fun with how you create those pages. It could be things you photographed on yourself, it could be all sorts of different elements, but it's got to really portray your personality, your individuality, and most importantly, your creativity. So I hope that's been really useful in terms of going through the key elements to putting together a fashion portfolio for um, interviews at university. And I want to kind of come on to then 
um, studying fashion design. Uh, so ultimately, you'll use a portfolio as a part of your application process. Uh, so when you're applying to a degree course, it will obviously be your qualifications, your personal statements, um, your portfolio, and also interview that forms part of that selection process where then you're offered a place on the degree course. Um, and that's just the starting point, really. And then once you get onto a degree course, you'll be developing a whole range of skills to keep building on that portfolio. In fact, you've obviously developed new portfolios when you go on a degree course. And when you come out the other side of the um, degree, you will have a really strong portfolio that you will then be able to, to kind of show to potential employers in the fashion industry, um, or maybe you want to do an MA uh, that you can show to uh, an MA course as well. And that's the key thing that your portfolio never stops, okay? You'll continue to build on skills, build on the strengths of your portfolio work, doing new things, new projects, and ultimately finding yourself. And that's really important. Where you start to express your individuality even further, and you start to have a real sense of your sort of design philosophy, your design DNA that's distinctive to you. So at Regents, we really value that idea of the individual, and that's really important to us. I'm going to show you some examples of some of the work that our students do at Regents, so you can see the individuality in their work, and also the other skills they've learned and gained as they study with us over the three years. Uh, so our philosophy, we offer a comprehensive and personalised design education for ambitious, ambitious individuals seeking to launch their, um, their fashion career or to establish their own business. Uh, our two pathway options offer you the choice um, to explore and develop specific skills and areas of expertise within fashion to reflect your ambition. So there's lots of choices as a part of our program. So you can kind of almost tailor your course to reflect what you want to do in the future. And our graduates go on to either work for top fashion brands, or also to set up their own business as well. Um, what's distinct about Regents? Well, we're a private independent university in the heart of London, uh, London being one of the world's fashion capitals, and we are right in the heart of London. We're in a beautiful green oasis in terms of one of the royal parks, but we've got museums, galleries, exhibitions, design stores, department stores, everything all at our fingertips. So we're really well located. The other really distinctive aspects about Regents is we teach in small uh, student groups. So our teaching ratio is one to 17 or less which means you get lots of personalized contact time with your tutors, uh, which means we can kind of tailor our teaching to your needs and ambitions for the future. So we do really go out of our way to make sure that we really help steer and guide you to achieve what you want to do in the future. Our teaching staff are also experienced educators as well as having their own professional practice and industry links. So, Many of my team also work in the fashion industry, and that's really important. They bring that contemporary practice, uh, those different industry experiences, those contacts, those connections to the student experience, and that's so vital. We are so industry focused here at Regents, and hopefully uh, over the next few slides, you'll get an understanding of what I mean by that. Uh, the one thing is also we are very international, so our student body is made up of 89% of students from outside the UK. We are truly international, which I really um, love. And I think what that means is we have this kind of international community of very confident, cosmopolitan, connected students. And you'll get to study alongside students from all different parts of the world. And I think that's so inspirational in terms of, certainly within the fashion industry, it's really important to have that wider connection. Uh, as I mentioned, we have two pathway options. We have fashion design, or we have fashion design with marketing. Uh, so there are two study routes you can take on our course. Uh, so you choose either one of those pathways, and I'll hopefully highlight just the key elements to both those pathways. So for the fashion design pathway, you're developing a um, highly innovative catwalk collection by the time you get to third year. And it's all about you defining your own individual design identity and philosophy. That's it, ultimately. It's about you and your DNA in terms of creativity and design. Uh, it's certainly about showcasing your creative and also technical excellence as well. So throughout your time with us, you'll learn lots of different elements in terms of pattern cutting, 
garment construction, tailoring, drapery, lots of different kind of technical skills where you become super confident in the final year to be able to kind of then realize your design ideas through uh, the production of a six outfit collection. You'll also pr produce a professional design portfolio. So the thing we started this present, this webinar with this morning, or sorry, earlier today, um, you'll go on to produce a professional design portfolio, which you'll be able to take out to industry for interviews or for postgraduate study. Our students also produce a range of self promotion material, um, which could be lookbooks, uh, videos, short fashion films. They do all sorts of different elements to promote themselves and their um, designs. Then the fashion design uh, with marketing pathway is really enabling students to create capsule collections for high-end fashion brands. Uh, so it's slightly different from the other pathway um, where there's much more of an emphasis on understanding the consumer and also developing knowledge and understanding of different marketing strategies and so on. So this has that marketing element embedded within that pathway. You'll be able to provide design solutions for international brands, as well as also prepare a professional design portfolio. Your collection that you produce in your final year might also maybe aimed at a specific area of the industry as well, rather than reflecting your own design DNA. That's entirely up to you. But that's a distinctive element of this pathway. Again, these students will also produce a marketing campaign to support the products they develop in their final year as well. So that's the other distinctive element of this pathway. I mentioned elective modules. So again, as you're studying with us, you're learning drawing, design, pattern cutting and making, all the way through the course, uh, alongside lots of other things. But there's a range of different elective modules that you can also choose from in first year and also in the second year that hopefully are of interest to you. So maybe in the first year, you might want to do more in terms of fashion drawing, or maybe want to learn more about fashion industry in the first year. In the second year, Maybe you want to learn more about fashion accessories or styling or photography or think about an industry placement or actually learn about how to do a fashion show production uh, and actually partake in the organization of a fashion show. Maybe you want to be your own business person in the future. So maybe you want to do the fashion entrepreneurship or maybe you see how you want to see how your collection is linked to the media and PR. So maybe you do fashion publishing and media relations. So lots of different options there for you in terms of elective modules. I mentioned that our course is very industry focused. So part of that means we have lots of industry guests come in to del deliver either talks or little masterclasses to our students. So here on this image, you can see a picture of Ellie Grace Frost, who is the women's wear and accessory designer at Louis Vuitton. Uh, doing a little masterclass here in terms of um, accessories. We've also had Priya or Aluwalia, uh, which is a cool menswear label from Aluwalia Studios. She's won lots of different fashion awards, um, pioneering in terms of fashion sustainability, um, which I think is ever, ever uh, becoming increasingly more important to the fashion industry. And she's come in to do some masterclass with our students as well in the past. We also participate in some entry projects. So we organize um, live um, projects with different fashion brands. This is a, a photograph of one of the pieces that students produced for um, a live project we had with a Swedish fashion brand called Cos. Um, and here you've got a nice quote from uh, one of the students, Natty Wong, uh, who produced this outfit. One major challenge in this project was to include my design aesthetics that also fits with COS identity and branding. So what's really useful about these live industry projects is how you adapt your distinctive creativity, uh, your own sort of design aesthetics and how you apply that to another brand. That's a really important part of being a designer as well. So you learn really good experience from those types of projects. And we often do those live projects in the second year. Uh, we have a number of industry talks and events that happen throughout the year as well. So again, uh, people coming in from different areas of the fashion industry. So we had WGSN come in in the autumn term. Uh, WGSN is one of the world's largest trend forecasting organizations and did uh, a talk on catwalk trends to our students. 
And we've also had Melanie Walker in, who was the senior, or, sorry, head of design at Victoria Beckham, talked about her time at Victoria Beckham and also her role as a head designer. And she talked about her process and showed how she developed collections to the students as well. We have trips and excursions each year, going to different sort of capitals. The images here on the right, you can see our photographs from the last trip we had to Antwerp, Antwerp in Belgium. Antwerp is such a cool city. Um, it's definitely the birth birthplace of deconstructed fashion. So if you're familiar with designers like Margiela uh, or Raph Simmons, they all came from Antwerp. Uh, but it's an amazing city, but we try to go to different destinations each time. And sometimes we link those part of projects we do as well. Our students also have the opportunity to undertake work placements or work experience throughout the time with us. Um, my team support our students and also we have a dedicated uh, careers service as well who supports our students in terms of securing work placements. And you can see the range of different companies that our students gain um, experience in, which I think is vital if you're going to graduate and go into the fashion industry. It's really important to have really good industry experience as a part of your degree studies. Our graduates. Um, just a couple of things. I mentioned uh, some of our graduates set up their own businesses. There's two examples here, many more. Um, but this is a photograph of Ilias Uwali, who was from um, the Lebanon. Um, and he, after he graduated, he participated in a TV talent show called Fashion Star Arabia. And he was the overall winner, won $100,000 as a part of his prize, plus mentoring and lots of press coverage. And now he set up his own business and his own fashion label. And his market is selling, obviously, fashion to uh, the Middle East. So some examples of some of his work from the talent show competition. And then we have Christian Siriano. Maybe some of you have heard of him. He's a very well-known designer in America, in New York. He graduated from he graduated from Regents ten years ago. He won the fourth season of American Design Pro, uh, Competition Project Project Runway, very famous talent show, um, and was also the series' youngest winner at the time as well. Uh, Christian Siriano's designs have appeared on the world's biggest stars and most pre uh, prestigious red carpets. He's dressed celebrities like Angelina Jolie, Scott Johansson, Julianne Moore, and countless others. So that's just a couple of examples of some of our graduates who've gone on to set up their own successful labels and with such kudos and such recognition. But also our graduates go on to work for lots of different global fashion brands as well. So here's a flavor of some of the types of brands that our students go on to work for. Um, some of the students, when they graduate, from their degree, also want to go on and do a, a, a master's, a, an MA or postgraduate degree. Um, and they go on to lots of different um, universities. We have really good links with obviously Regents. We have our own international fashion marketing um, MA and also luxury brand management MA here at Regents. Uh, we have students go over to University of Westminster for the MA menswear course, which is one of the best menswear MA courses. Students also progress on to Central St. Martins. London College of Fashion, Parsons in New York, and Royal College of Art as well in London as well, some of the top kind of leading uh, MA fashion courses. Uh, that's a, a, a kind of whirlwind sort of overview in terms of, our, uh, of the course. Um, you can also follow us uh, if you're on Instagram. Do check us out on Instagram. You'll see lots of our student work. Uh, it'd be a nice way to kind of communicate through that way. We're happy to chat and things through that as well. So do do follow us and connect with us. Um, you can find out a bit more about Regents University on Vimeo. So there's a nice little link there. And if you want further information about the fashion design course or about other courses at Regents, then if you log on to our website, which is regents.ac.uk, you can certainly find out a lot more there. Um, I've got time now for lots of questions and, and, and answers. Um, so uh, that's my presentation. So I do wish to thank you very much for 
listening and uh, taking the time to sit on this webinar today. And I really do hope it was useful. Thank you. Uh, no, it was a great presentation. Uh, we have a couple of questions I think that we need to address. Yes. Uh, so I think the first question that came, how many pieces of design should be in a portfolio as minimum or maximum? Is there in a certain amount of pieces that need to be included in a portfolio? They can vary. So I think if, if you've got, if you're designing a collection, I'd say sort of try to aim towards developing six outfits uh, as a part of one project. But you may have another project which is just more about kind of making things, and that could be less, you know, where you're just being experimental and making a couple of products that you've shown the process uh, and then the final outcomes through photography. Does that help? Okay, that's brilliant. Um, what kind of social activities are available for international students? Do you have any social activities for your students who study in the grade? <laughs> we do. We have little kind of social evenings, a part of our course. Um, we always have little get together so um, we really like it when all our year groups come together so first second years all come together for a social uh, if we do little trips and excursions we're often going to exhibitions which is always a nice way of kind of getting out and getting to know each other um, we also have um, social events for all of our programs so our fashion and design programs so that's interior design fashion marketing graphic and digital design and also fashion design where we all come together as well for lots of socials. There's also at Regents lots of It's live, it's live, it's live. It's live, Sora. Polo to motor racing, all sorts of different types of clubs and societies as a part of Regents University you might want to get involved in. Uh, question, I think. Um... So you mentioned, can we work in the UK after graduation? Um, obviously, there is a two-year thing now, isn't there? There's a post-work study visa um, that has been uh, introduced by by the government. That's correct. Uh, so it will be implemented for students who will graduate from uh, from next summer 21. Yeah. However, in terms of securing a job in Britain, it is I would we have to be honest, it would rely definitely on the students and how active or proactive they are in terms of trying Absolutely. to apply for jobs and preparing the CV in advance. We as a yeah. institute, we will encourage our students to prepare the CVs, we'll give them the support they need, and we'll take them through the whole step in terms of how to apply and how to prepare for interviews and application form, etc. We have a specialized team who will support the students from the day they arrive till the day they, they leave the university in case they are interested to do internship or they're interested to do a part-time job or they're interested to get a, a job after um, the degree. Uh, I think if we, we relate that question in the context of the creative subject, um, what is the possibility for students, let's say they applied for the post-work study visa, they graduated from Regents University, uh, they got a degree in fashion, in terms of penetrating the the industrial fashion in Britain, I'm applying and getting that first initial experience. Um, do we have any story to share in terms of... Uh... Yeah, we do. Um, it, it, I mean, I, I'll be honest, it's a very competitive industry. I think that is the same in all countries. Uh, the fashion industry is a very tough one. Um, but that's not to say that, you know, there, there are loads of amazing opportunities. Uh, we had a, a student who graduated last year who was from Azerbaijan um, and through our connections with the live projects with COS, uh, they actually sponsored her a visa uh, and offered her a job uh, after a, obviously successfully passing the interview. So those opportunities are there. We have a really good alumni network um, that as well you should be a part of as well. Um, again, there's lots of advice uh, through through that kind of alumni network as well. But there are lots of opportunities. I think, as Abdul said, you know, a lot of emphasis will be on you and your commitment to your development and your professional development. Uh, and, you know, because we're small and we, we work in small groups, we really do help you grow uh, and develop fully. Uh, and our mission is to prepare you for industry, you know, as you saw from the presentation. It's all very entry focus. Uh, another question, I think, 
any health insurance you provide for students in school for COVID? Well, we wouldn't, I mean, um, health insurance to cover COVID-19, I'm not sure this is something that uh, has been covered yet. Um, but I will try to look into it and see if we can give you further information about the health insurance. But as yeah. uh, as um, general, generally speaking, when students apply to get a tier four visa, they will, they will pay a fee for the national health services in Britain, which cover the students to go and make a use of their our national health service in Britain, um, which is a slightly different from uh, private health insurance. Uh, but this is something offered for all international students when they apply to study in, in the UK and obtain a tier four visa. Can you please tell us about language requirements? So in terms of language requirement for our BA, uh, students will be required to obtain six in IELTS. That's correct, yeah. Yeah, so that would be the minimum and a minimum of 5.5 in each uh, component. So nothing less than 5.5 in any of the four components that and the IELTS test. We we do have our own English uh, test. So in case the students are not really um, interested or they couldn't do, there was no availability for the IELTS, they can set one of our English proficiency tests and gain admission if they pass our English admission test. Okay. Um, is there any more questions? I think we answered most of the questions here. Okay, uh, is there any other questions? Ladies and gentlemen, we're more than happy to answer any questions you may have. Any questions from anyone? Uh, was that helpful in terms of guidance, uh, in terms of portfolio? It could be good to get some feedback from you, um, whether you felt that was helpful. Maybe next time if we do another one of these um, portfolio webinars, anything else you'd like to know, maybe in the future? Thank you very much. <laughs> um, Mr. Mustafa Tiber, say thank you. It was clear. It was very okay. Uh, yeah. So in terms of application, anyone who's interested to apply to Regents or find more information about our university, I have included the link to our university, www.regents.ac.uk. And if you want to have um, if you have any questions, admission questions, or you want to apply, I've also included my email address, um, hamida at regions.ac.uk. Um, so please feel free to get in touch if you require or need any further information. Stephen has just added his email address. Right, yeah. So if you've got any specific questions about the course, uh, if you want me to send you some literature as well about the course as well, I can send you some links to some of the students' work, um, then please feel free to drop me a line, email me. Uh, there's my contact details. I'll be help you, you know, give you some advice and guidance in terms of the course as well. Brilliant. Okay. Any other questions we may take? Stephen and Abdul, thank you so much, both of you. It was a really good presentation. Uh, we have two more minutes, so if you want to uh, wait for one more question. <laughs> what you're singing like, Abdul? <laughs> Thank you, Doug. My voice is. I don't want to have put people off yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got two minutes for any questions. Um... Last question that goes Do we need to have a specific team in the portfolio? Do you need to have what? Sorry? specific theme a specific theme uh, no I think it should be research that inspires you so um, always try to find some sort of inspiration some sort of research theme that gets you you know that you are excited by that hopefully inspires ideas that's a key thing um, obviously your knowledge of fashion is important but I think actually looking wider in terms of general art, design, and culture should be parts of the research you look at. Maybe there's, um, maybe you're particularly interested in photography, so maybe there's a photographer's work that you like the look of, that you could use as a research theme, or maybe as an artist, or an exhibition you've been to. All those different types of things are the sorts of kind of research you can bring into 
include in your portfolio and to develop your projects from? And I suppose one final thing is, 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 is it's good that you find your own research things. And I think it starts to express you and your individuality and your interests. And that's really what we're looking for is who are you? What are you about? What really are you into? What gets you excited in terms of ideas? Brilliant. Okay. Uh, other question or chat? Brilliant. Right. All right. Lovely. Thank you, everyone, for coming along today. Do get in touch if you want to touch base, got any questions. Do check us out on Instagram, follow us. Um, look at our websites for further details about the course or other courses. And hopefully we look forward to hearing from you and maybe seeing you in the future. And good luck. Well, thank you so much, Stephen and thank Abdul. You. We will hopefully see you, both of you in Turkey uh, in October. Absolutely. I'll be there. <laughs> right. Yeah. All right. Take care. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye now.